Well, according to the National Association of Colleges and Employers, only about 20% of college graduates in the U.S. will have jobs by the time they walk across the stage to get their degree this spring. Two years ago, it was more than 50%. Yes, the economy is that tough. Well, this week, author and business mentor Collins Andrews spoke to an Arkansas group of college job placement directors and corporate recruiters. His book, Listen to Your Work, draws on his business experiences with Axiom and Altel. He now joins us to share some anecdotal insight of what's happening in the market. Collins, good to see you again. Oh, thanks, Roby. First question, you've been with a group of college recruiters and human resource specialists this past week. What's the prevailing thought of, of just how tough the job market is right now? Well, they, they did talk quite a bit about the job market being much more difficult today than even, even last year. And they're concerned about uh, they're concerned about that the that their students would be realistic about about expectations. They're concerned about uh, teaching students that job searching is as much networking as it is interviewing, and that was probably the prevailing discussion: is is how you get that message across and get get students to work on making contacts, which then eventually lead to the opportunity to work. Um, and I, I would say those are probably the main things I heard them talk about. They were also concerned about, and this was I think was pretty interesting, that the, the way to communicate with young people today is through uh, some electronic means that, that many of our businesses and, and that group also were not prepared to do well, and they wanted to improve their own ability to use uh, Twitter and Facebook and those kinds of communications tools. Oh, well, that, that's very interesting. You know, if you've got all these different social networking tools out there, like you say, is it the fear of the technology itself or just not knowing how to maximize it? I think it's the latter. I, you know, I don't think anyone who's a successful business person today is so afraid of technology they won't use anything. But, uh, but these are new tools and they're used in different ways. And it, it was kind of funny. They were talking about probably the best way to get their departments to effectively use the tools is to get some students to come in and do the work for them uh, because the students can probably get them going in an hour where it might take them a, a week. Well, Arkansas seen and will likely continue to see a slide in white collar employment, especially with the transition taking place in central Arkansas at the, the Verizon former Alltel campus. You've seen a lot of cycles before. How, how might Arkansas cycle out of this current downturn? Well, I think it is a certainly a concern that we would we would lose a corporate headquarter and and corporate headquarters are very important and 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 I think that we'll see some negative effect from from that loss and I don't think there's any way to get around that but but I agree with you that there really are cycles to business and one of the things that appears to be happening from this this change is that there are there are quite a few people uh, well-paid, white-collar workers, very energetic people, a very good team uh, of people who are interested in remaining in this area and in doing business in this area. So I think we will see some amount of energizing of, of entrepreneurial businesses come out of this, which in the long run could be terrific for this area, but in the short run we're, we're going to lose some jobs and lose some people, and I think that's unfortunate. Now, your book, Listen to Your Work, is about career advice as you move through different phases in life and your career. What, what do you think somebody will get out of this book today? You know, I, it took a long time to write this book. It really took five years. And, you know, as I've gone back and looked at some of the stuff I've said, it's, to me it's interesting that, that I think the basic issues of business are really the same. And even though business cycles change and there are boom times and not so good times, the basic advice about uh, about how important it is to uh, deal effectively with customers, to manage financials, uh, to treat your employees correctly, to communicate well. Uh, those kind of messages and issues are really the same. So I think what someone would get today is probably the same thing they would have gotten out of it five years ago, which is how to get a good start and how to adapt into business uh, and its different environment. Mentoring is also a major topic in the book. You were mentored by some real characters as described in the book. You also spent an extraordinary amount of time mentoring others. Is, is this an art or practice that's being lost, or is it, do you see it gaining momentum today? To, you know, I really think it's gaining momentum. You see much more about it. If you, if you Google mentoring, you get a, a significant number of hits and a lot of current activity. So I think it's important, but it is a very difficult thing to do. 
uh, a, a true mentoring relationship is not a power position, it's a caring position. So, so you just can't, you can't force it, uh, but when those relationships do exist, they're extremely beneficial uh, really to both parties. What got you interested in mentoring in the first place? Was it a recognition that somebody took you under their wing? I th n no, I, I really think it came from systematics and in the time period of late 70s through the 80s when, when we were go growing extremely uh, rapidly and our growth rate was basically dependent upon the assimilation of new employees. So we were desperately looking for new employees and, and the faster we could, we could take people who were not very experienced and turn them into knowledgeable, experienced employees, the better the company did. And, and I think overall we got pretty good at that. I was just one of many people who ended up advising and supporting people in their careers so they could be uh, uh, good contributors. Now, I, th I think it was more of a, it was a business necessity and I didn't, I didn't know it was happening, it just was. All right, the book is Listen to Your Work by Arkansas author and management consultant Collins Andrews. Thanks for your insight. Thank you, Roby. And we've got details on how you can get a copy of the book on our website, www.talkbusiness.net.